Well, as we start right now, if there is people joining on, I apologize for them not getting the full spark. But uh, to start out, I would like to welcome each and every one of you to this webinar, Forage Your Way to Success. My name is Jeff Legard, and I'm out of Grandview. I am the business development specialist for MASC. But first and foremost, I want to let you know that I'm a livestock producer and a hay uh, producer. And, uh, and with that, I've grown up in Saskatchewan. I got an ag biz diploma from, uh, from uh, Lakeland College out of Vermilion, and then I moved to Manitoba started my career here in the egg and uh, raised three healthy boys and married to a loving wife and uh, raising cattle, working two different jobs and trying to see each and every hockey rink that we can in Manitoba and Saskatchewan is all part of what we do as a family. So um, that's where we're at with that. Um, I'd like to say thanks for everyone that's come on. It's It was really rewarding to see that we've got 90 participants that have signed up for it some are still coming on um with uh, that i would do a little housekeeping i have matt collins on here he's going to be the administrator for us if at any time you have any questions or you'd want to uh, bring something forward and you want to be anonymous there is part of the way in chat you can be anonymous or you can put your hand up during the presentation i may not be able to see a hand up so matt will stop me at any time to do it so that's perfect uh we want this to be an interactive approach to a webinar, foraging your way to success. We don't want it just for everyone to sit here and listen to me the whole time. Well, we do have some poll questions uh, that we'd love for everyone to please answer. Those poll questions are so we can drive this presentation to the people's interests that we have on it. For those that are industry people that are on here, we thank you for coming on. Uh, don't answer the question if, it, if it's not relative, relevant to you. If you're not a livestock producer or a forage person, please just leave it blank and, and allow us to go to the audience that we're looking for. Um, I see some people have cameras on. Uh, hopefully all everyone's muted, which will help us to get through it. Um, if you have good internet service and everything's working right, we welcome you to keep your camera on. If, if you think you're in a questionable thing, you may lag this whole presentation. So for that, we're going to ask you to take your camera off if you're questionable. Um, outside of that, I think I'll start the presentation. And, uh, and I will apologize. There will be times when we share the screen. There will be down times. Also, there may be a little bit of a hiccup when we do the poll questions as far as you know, there may be some silence. So I'm going to start my sharing my screen. And once it's up, uh, I just going to get it here. All right, perfect. So foraging away to success is, uh, is how we labeled it because we do believe this is an important part of it. Um, and I do have to move things around just so that I can see everything right. So we've done the housekeeping and now I'd like to start with a, a greetings from our Honorable Blaine Peterson. He hoped to be here, but unfortunately with the house being in session, he wasn't able to do it. So with that, I will start it. Um, hopefully it sounds great. I know we've done some practice runs and, uh, and it was pretty good. So I'll start with that now. After back-to-back -back challenging growing seasons for forage in 2018 and 2019, I tasked MASC to commission a review of MASC's forage insurance programs. As you know, insurance is an effective tool that producers have available to minimize their operations risk due to production shortfalls. The forage review was completed last year and outlined several recommendations, one being that MASC should leverage partnerships with industry to improve awareness, promotion, and education of the program. Today, I am pleased to welcome all of you to our webinar, Forage Your Way to Success. We want to extend our gratitude to our industry partners for reaching out and promoting the event to their membership. Presented by Jeff Lagarden, MASC's Business Development Specialist, you will find out how Manitoba producers have been benefiting from our forage products available through MASC. This webinar will go through the details of the program changes and enhancements, the benefits of forage insurance, additional program options, and the no-cost advantages to insured producers. 
you are encouraged to contact MASC to discuss your insurance options, making sure you have the right coverage for your operation. With the first day of spring just days away, I wish you well with calving and the best of luck as you prepare for the start of a busy season ahead. Enjoy the webinar, stay safe, and thank you. Thank you, Honorable Peterson, for that. That's, uh, it was nice to know that they do have an interest in it and a stake at forages this year. And, and, and I was part of that review of the forages and, and it's, it's nice to know that it's not just us pushing forward for some of these things that they, they are involved and they want it. And to start out this whole thing, uh, we wanna do a poll with you guys and we wanna know more about the operations that we're dealing with on this webinar. And the first poll question we do have is about your farming operation. Are you just a livestock operation? Are you a mixed one, livestock and grain? Or are you a forage based program? And we ask that you do click on it because that's how we're gonna drive all our, all our motions forward is through the answers that we get. So once you click on the button and click submit, then it will be able to be brought up to myself as well. And, and, and we can keep going from there. And it's just a, kind of an icebreaker for the whole presentation. Matt, is there any uh, messages or chat that I need to address before we go any farther? All right, great. So they said my volume is a little bit down. So I'm gonna, I'll, I think what I'll do is I'll just speak a little louder to that it works for everybody. Um, shouldn't be a problem. So what we wanna do is now, now we know that we've got a mixed group. Obviously everybody has their own ways about it. So uh, what's new and noteworthy, and this is partly from the review that we had was, is now we've introduced forage yield conditioning. That cushioning, what it does is basically it's taking out the real lows and the real highs when you report your forages. So those years that where you basically had nothing, we're now bringing it back up to 70% on the bottom end and up to 160 on the top end. And that is going to just be able to give you a more accurate, consistent number that we're looking at. And on the course, say we go from 60% up to 160. So that's one of the benefits that we've changed for this forage coming year. The other thing is the forage dollar values. We've gone from the transportation allowance from eight to 16 for select and basic, not just one of them. And the hay disaster benefit has gone from $20 up to 24. We're working at reducing administration and that process is underway right now. And that's part of our review that we were started. And the other thing is now we're trying to use satellite based imagery with Saskatchewan and Alberta to improve our abilities to speed up whether we're in hay claims or not and to help the producers all the way through. Flexible, affordable, year round protection for forage crops with a variety of insurance options. And with that, we say it's flexible, it's affordable and simple, but we wanna know how your knowledge is. And this is the poll number two that we'd really like you guys to let us know where we're at is on your, on a scale from one to 10, one being low, five being high, sorry. Uh, what's your knowledge of our insurance programs right now? And while you're answering that, that's just so that we have a better idea of where we're at and the audience so we can tailor it to you guys. And I hope my volume's better now. I, I am speaking a little louder. Um, Seems like nobody's complaining. So hopefully that's a good thing. And as we wait, we're just waiting for your answers. So once we get them in, that'd be great. Just waiting for the poll to be up. I don't think it's, oh, there we go. 
All right. Perfect. That's great to see that everyone's being honest. If, if the program's new to you, that's why you're here. That's why we want. And the ones that have a good idea about it, that's even better. So forage insurance is as simple as two options. And when I say that, the two options that we have is basic hay, which is the total farm, total bale coverage. Those producers that can see it and, and want they don't worry about specifics. They just need so many bales that we have the basic hay option for you. We also have the select hay, which is the variety specific, meaning that you can have individual coverage. Alfalfa is a crop, alfalfa grass is a crop, tame grasses and sweet clover, where bale counts and everything are separate and you keep track of it. And that's why the, the imagery that we have is with the basic, it's one total uh, stack and the other ones are separate stacked. But when, at this time, we want to know what or how do you value your forage production? And with that, we'll have another poll question. And from those questions and answers, we're going to actually break you out into a small breakout session that you can check, select either uh, select hay or basic from it. And that poll questions are, how do you value it? Is it total number of bales, bales per acre, or the quality of feed? And when we see that, that really drives a bus on how this forage insurance is tailored to your operation. And we try to make it as quick and simple for you guys as you want it. And so when we get these answers, that will just help us drive which way we put you into a room to break out into the specifics. And I thank everyone for answering as quick as they have been. And we'll just keep it going. I'm going to just look, I see there's some chat here. I just want to try to. Okay, I see they asked if there's a PDF file of it. Um, I believe we could. If somebody is looking for the PDF slides of it, we will definitely try to accommodate them. At the end of the presentation, there is my email address and the MASC website. So if you have any of those questions or concerns, absolutely just direct them to myself or anyone else and we'll help you accommodate them for sure. So that's great. Oh, this is awesome. So I'm just seeing the results. We're at a third and a third and a third. So we really have a group of dynamic people and that just shows how this whole forage program can't be one program fits all. And that's why we're gonna do it. So as I close out of this, I'm, I'm, we're gonna actually have two breakout sessions come up and you can select from the two breakout sessions. One's the select hay and one's the basic. And I'm glad to share that I have my coworker, Jen Badinsky, uh, Baduski, sorry, I keep doing that. She's gonna take on the basic hay presentation for a few minutes. And then after the, the breakout session, we'll bring you back in, uh, do a few more questions and answers, and then we'll go from there. Guys, how'd you make out? Not, I think they, they never had time for questions. Okay, that's fair. I don't think I rambled too quickly, so I think we did okay. Okay, I'll just share my screen once we get everyone back in. I did say, Jeff, that if they have any question, questions in the basic A program, to please direct them at you so that I do not have to answer them. Yep, absolutely. That'd be great. Um, do we have any questions? at this time right now i'm just going to look at my chat screen once again i apologize if there is this delay 
So none at this time, but please, if you have any questions, this is where we want to be interactive. I appreciate everyone's ability to get in and out of the chat rooms. It was great. So part of it I also wanted to mention is, is once we have the select and basic, the forage options and benefits for both of them are, are listed here, but the enhanced quality is those, that's only for the select, but those are for your dairy quality guys and your guys uh, exporting hay and when they have relative feed values way higher than 105. But the other ones, the harvest flood option for coarse hay, it's on both pasture insurance, restoration and the hay disaster benefit. All these options and benefits are all on both select and basic hay. I'm just gonna check the chat here while I see it came up. What is the premium paid on hay for the example? That's a great question. Um, we have different forage regions. So to answer that one, the best thing to do, and I'm not avoiding the question, but on the select hay, it's basically goes your forage region. So without knowing where your forage re regions are, the best thing you could do is contact your local MASC office. But the rough numbers are anywhere from 10 to $16 an acre, upwards of 19 on alfalfa grass. But they all vary based on your experience and they based are on where your forage region is. So to, to say any more than that, I, I have to say, you probably need to talk specifics to your area and to your agent or contact me after the meeting and I can look it up for you. I hope that answers that question. So the hay disaster benefit, it is on both the select and the basic, it comes free. And that's when Mr. Peterson said that there was options that come free to you. This is one of them. And in 2018 and 2019, we triggered this benefit. 2 point or 3.2 in 18 and $5.3 million were paid to producers when they weren't expecting any of it. Now the trigger for it is when 20% of all insureds only have half their coverage. And this automatically gets paid out to every producer that when you trigger, if you have a hay claim, if you didn't have a hay claim, obviously we weren't in a shortfall and you didn't have the disaster. But as a province, if 20% have less than 50% of their coverage, it automatically triggers. And it's a beautiful part. It just shows up as a check to you when you're in a claim. The forage insurance benefits. When we look at the benefits, the number one thing is it is a risk management tool. And it's the one thing you can use and guarantee that it, you can protect yourself. You know the numbers before you even hit haying season. If you're shortfall, you know you're getting a dollar check back to you. And it is the only insurance program for forages in Manitoba that is a cost shared. You're not paying 100% of the cost to it. So 60% of it's paid by province and the feds and only 40% of the premiums are shared to yours. I see there's some more chat, so I'll stop at this time and ask them, see if I can get the questions here. What was the premium paid, for example, given the 78,000? You know, Matt, that one I can't say off the top of it uh, without looking into it further. Um, but obviously he didn't pay any premiums because the premiums aren't due till October 31st. So that producer that got the 78,000 on the select hay example, plus the 90, the 19,000 on the hay disaster, that producer didn't pay any premiums. They would have been reduced from his claim and they were interest-free till October 31st. Can you give a good estimate of coverage and premiums for forage program with our online forage insurance calculator? Uh, or Mike is just letting us know that we can do the calculator on our website as well. So we can review more of these questions as we go along as well. But unfortunately, yeah, I didn't look at the premium and I, I apologize for that as far as it, but in consideration to his check, he got back out of it. It was quite a bit higher. Another benefit for having forage insurance is the maintaining your herd side during adversity. And, and that sounds real lovely and pretty, but at the end of the day, what is that saying? Instead of selling your cow herd because you don't have enough hay to supply for them, you are in a forage program where you know your numbers, you know what you're gonna get, and you can take your forage dollars to go and buy more hay. 
And that's what we're basically saying is, is this is a bankable program that you can clearly see where you're at, know what you're getting, and still keep your herd size the way it is. And one of the other things I'd like to talk about is the second last point, and that's the ad hoc programs. When we talk about the hay disaster benefit to producers, ad hoc programs is what we say is when they, the province would come out with a program and pay everybody. And we saw it in the last two years of when the, in 2018 and 2019, when the ad hoc program or what we call the hay disaster benefit came out, I had a lot of producers that were not insured asking if they could get a payout. Simple answer is if you're not in the forage program, you're not getting a payout. So that's why this program is so beneficial to those that take part of it. And it's just the peace of mind of it. I think there was some more questions, but before I go to the next slide, I'll see if I can get to them. Yeah, no, that, that one I can deal with in the next slide. So sorry for the little bit of delays, but that's just how this automation goes. So at this time, I want to make sure we talk about the additional programs to know. The number one thing that is separate from the forage program, but we're very pleased to say we have it is the forage establishment insurance. You do have to sign up for it separately. And that's making sure that the year that you is, you're planting a forage crop that it establishes. And the big thing is, is if it's 75% ground cover or less, you can qualify for a payout and it's very simple but you do have to sign up for that one by March 31st as well. Pasture days is a separate program from the forage program and that one is based on grazing days for pastures and making sure that you can get so many days and guarantee those days on it separate to the forage but you can also sign up for that as well. And the last one I want to talk about and make sure everyone's aware of is the livestock price insurance. Formerly, the Western Livestock Price Insurance is now the what we've used, the acronym LPI. It is the one and only option that you can protect your livestock from market uncertainty. And I, I can't talk about it as much. I've been a user of the program, and it's just a peace of mind that everyone should be looking at. It started in February. It rolls till into April this year. And if you have any questions about that program, please don't hesitate to contact any of the MASC offices or myself. Um, but all these three, forage establishment, pasture days, and livestock are separate from the forage program. So make sure you uh, keep that uh, aware. And uh, with that, I want to just go into here. The number one thing on this slide is, is if you are interested or if you have any interest in being in the forage program this year, the time is now. March 31st is the deadline to sign up. You have to have signed a contract with us and be in the program by March 31st. Show your intent. Outside of that, once we get into April, it's too late to be into the program. So I put my email address up there. I am willing to deal with and help everyone that was part of this webinar to get signed up. If you, if you want to go to another way, we do have our website where we could actually see the PDF file on this or it should channel you to the YouTube of this presentation, or you can follow us on Twitter. And I think uh, the number one thing I'll say it again is, is March 31st is our deadline to sign up. Those questions specifically about premiums, about your coverage, your forage region, all can be answered with a few things. And, and then it all starts with your legal lands and where you're farming out of. I do see there's some more chat, so I'm gonna open it up again. And, uh, and here we go. Um, thanks for the reminder about the March 31st. I have a few questions um, that have been sent to me already. Um, if you do have questions, just throw them into the chat while I'm answering these ones. And the first one is, what is relative feed value? Relative feed value is one of the feed tests, is part of the feed test that we do when we do a hay claim where we actually take a core sample of your feed and we send it away. And relative feed is one of the number one things that the industry uses for a gauge of good, bad and poor quality hay. And those guarantees you can see and, and you can talk to your livestock specialist, but that's the one thing we use as a, as a guarantee on the, on the forage program for select hay. And it just makes sure that, um, we're not just looking at the 
at the bail and saying, yeah, it's a good bail. We're actually looking deeper than from the outside. And then the next question I have is, is why do I have to report my production by the end of September? The number one reason we want you to report by September 30th is, is because we, if in the chance that you're in a claim position, we want to be there before you start feeding. And we want to be able to count your bales, do samples and help you before you start feeding. We want to be on top of those things. And that's one of the things we want to do for you. And if you're shortfall and you do have the relative feed value that we'll give you, we'll give you a feed test. You can use that as a free benefit to yourself to make a better uh, blend for your feeding for the year or know what you need to get to help yourself along. And, uh, and that's the biggest thing is, is if we can be there before you start, weigh the bales, get out there before the snow flies and before those cows need the feed, it's better and beneficial to everyone else. Sorry, I, I, I see so many coming through here um, for, uh, for the question. I have one more question before I start into the other ones. I only have one cut. Can I put my cows out after? I like using the line, anytime you're doing something different, we're like Manitoba Hydro, call before you dig. That's the line I use with all my insureds. If you are going to do something outside a cut and bale and you wanna do something differently, by all means you can. But before you do anything differently, we ask that you call the office and let us know what you're doing so we can have an adjuster out there to see or weigh or measure what you wanna change. And we've used this example in areas like this last few years when there was a potential drought or lack of production and producers had a fence around it. If they didn't want to cut it because there wasn't enough production, but they wanted to put the cows out, by all means, this is when we ask you, call us, we'll send an adjuster out, he'll appraise it. If it's below the cut line, perfect, put the cows out, get whatever value you can. We don't want to hold you up, but like Manitoba Hydro says, call before you dig. Call us before you do anything other than cut and bail. So uh, the next question is on pasture days program, when is the deadline and does it cover custom grazing? The, that is a detailed question. You do have to be signed up for pasture days but prior to March 31st. And it is based on the number of acres or, and the quality of stand you have and the number of cows that you put out there. I believe we can do a custom grazing, but you better double check with your local agency. And it's based on the number in and number out and everything that way. But if you own the land and you're gonna report those number of cattle per day, that should be fine by us, no problem. When is the deadline and does it, okay. Sorry, I was just scrolling down. Do I need to be insured to build my coverage levels? Good question. You don't need to be insured to increase your cover levels, coverage levels, but you do have to report your hay. And in the past, one of the things MASC has had lots of trouble doing is getting non-insureds or people that have hay that they don't have selected for coverage to report. They usually don't report. So when you don't report, we don't know how to build a coverage level. So it is based on your accuracy on reporting that we can only drive it to help increase the coverage level that you would be given when you do want to be in the program. And that goes for all the programs that if you have something that's not insured and you don't report it, we have nothing to base on. I'm just looking. What are, what are the best kinds of seeds when seeding for a hay? field that is area specific i can't actually go into the best seeds um and maybe i'm reading that question wrong but when it comes to what's best we really leave that up to you the experts we'll provide the insurance whether you use the best seed or not if it doesn't establish we'll cover you if, if you have forage insurance um, as far as those ones uh we don't uh, levy one over the other. So I'd never say one product's better than the other on that end. And I appreciate the question, uh, but for the most part, 
the the seed reps in your area and the people that you deal locally know your land and your business better than I do. And then uh, the last question I'm reading is, did past year's history go into the new corn IPI question mark? <sighs> past year histories would if they're in there, but we only used, and corn is not part of the forage program, but we'll answer your question. And I'm not dodging that bullet by no means. We would use 17 and 18 years, uh, the year 17 and 18, your history into your future consideration for your corn numbers. So we're only going back two years because that's what we can base it off of. But yes, those past years will be included going forward on corn. Are corn grazing acres part of this? Um, no, corn grazing is not part of the forage program. We do offer uh, through agri insurance silage corn coverage. And part of that is with it that you do have the ability to use silage corn and before, and it's the same thing as I always said, Manitoba Hydro, call before you dig. If you're not gonna silage it and you wanna graze it, that's fine. You call us, we'll have an adjuster come out and appraise your stand. And then from there, once we've appraised it, you can put the cows out for it. So, but it is separate from the forage program. And then Mike's added here a PDF for the rate forage rates and coverages. So you can click on that link in our chat if you wanted them right away. I still recommend that each and every one of you, if you have specific questions, it's so easy to contact one of our offices or myself. I can bring up the your history if it was there already in the past, or if you're completely new, I can bring it and give you a personalized estimate and email to you or print it off and faxed however you want it but I can give you a personalized one off of that. But thanks Mike for adding that. Sorry, I'm just trying to read here. They're coming in fast and furious. I appreciate each and everyone's questions. Um, if I'm going too fast, please message to Matt. I, I wanna make sure we get these as a more interactive. So I'm just going through here, sorry. Um, So it says on grazing days program, if I if I be proactive and reduce my cattle numbers now, how does it affect the insurance? So back to the pasture days program, if you reduce your your uh, cattle numbers, my my thoughts are is then you're less stress on the pasture and the numbers. It's still based on in the spring, before you go out to pasture, you, we, need, we need you to report the number of cows on it. And it is based on so many dollars per cow going forward. The only thing is, is if you're being proactive, um, it's still based on your numbers and how long you graze for. If you reduce your numbers, obviously the less stress on the hay or on the pasture is gonna allow you to graze longer. If you do hit your grazing days, which as a new producer, it's based on uh, 130 days at 90%, so it's around 117. If you hit 117 and you were proactive, unfortunately, that wouldn't be a payable program for you because you did it that way. But, um, so that is the one way of doing it. But being proactive is saying that you're going out 130, 140, 150 days because you have less animals on a, on a chunk of ground. That level of days that you go past will be increased every year because of the, your experience. And that's where that will come into effect. So I have producers that have uh, done a ton of cross fencing. They haven't had a claim on their pasture days, but they're up into 200 plus days coverage. And that's a, something that I'm proud to say that they've done for themselves. And it's such a good insurance program that they've done that by doing it. It didn't give them a payout, but it's sure given them more days of insurance. So yes, I've got that question answered. I think I've covered most of the questions right now. 
Uh, I'll leave the chat up. If you have more questions, let's. Uh, I'm free to stay on as long as you can. Um, So the, uh, so I think that's the same question I'm seeing. At this point, I would like to thank everybody for joining. Um, we were really ec ecstatic to say the least that we had this many participants. If you have more questions, once again, I've left this slide up. Please don't hesitate to email me or contact your local MASC office. We have the staff to look after you and we will make sure you do it. But the number one thing before we leave is we want to make sure that you remember that we have to have you registered into the program by March 31st. I thank yeah. everyone for coming. Oh, oh, Jeff, I just want to add as well that we'd like to thank our, our producer groups that have helped to promote this um, session for us. Um, so we have the Manitoba Beef Producers, the Manitoba Forage uh, um, Association, as well as uh, uh, Keystone Agricultural Producers. Uh, we are really grateful that they helped to spread the word about our webinar, our first webinar that we've done for MASC. So we're uh, we're really pleased and grateful to everyone who has supported um, us as well in uh, getting the word out. And uh, I'd like to personally thank you for being our uh, facilitator and host. Thanks, guys. I really hope it was something of value to you. And uh, if anything, we just want to do more to help each and every one of you get the insurance that you need. So thanks everyone for joining. And uh, I hope you have a great day and we see some sunshine and, and things to come are only better.